Thanks. Good morning, guys. Um, in March of 2000, Betsy Heisler, uh, who was then Gilman's upper school art teacher, called me out of the blue and asked if I'd like to apply for her job. I'd never heard of Gilman, and my only experience working with high school students had been in Micah's pre-college summer program for a few years beforehand. I was quite happy living the life of a painter and teaching undergraduate courses at Micah and Towson University. Regardless, under clear orders from home, I came in for an interview. The most impressive painting I saw that day was a large self-portrait by a young recent graduate by the name of Paulden Hamilton. Weeks later, I was offered the job and was quite unsure about accepting, but I kept thinking about Paulden's painting. And in ways, I think I elected to try Gilman 18 years ago, in large part because work of that quality was evidently possible here. I'll note that this painting currently sits in the hallway leading to uh, the Lumen Center, so you can check it out after the talk. Born and raised in Maryland, Paulden Hamilton attended the Gilman School, graduated in 1998, and went on to receive his BFA from the School of the Art Institute of Chicago in 2002. He then continued his education at the Art Students League in New York, where he received major awards for his work in realism. In the years since graduation, Paulden has maintained a very active professional career, having gained many commissions and awards along the way, including certificates of excellence from the Portrait Society of America. Paulden currently teaches over at the Zoll Studio School and the Chesapeake Fine Arts Studio and lives in Mount Washington. Please join me in welcoming back to Gilman, Paulden Hamilton. So hello everyone, uh, my name is Paulden Hamilton. Uh, I'm an artist that lives, um, as Carl said, in, uh, in Mount Washington, so right up the street. And uh, it occurred to me in the lead up to this talk that it was about, uh, it was almost exactly 20 years ago that I was doing my senior speech in this room uh, on the subject of art. And so um, it's something about which I knew very little at the time. And um, now I was thinking this would be sort of a nice little bookend of that, that two part uh, lecture. Um, but I have to say, I, I always very forthcoming about um, how my career in art is always filled with a certain degree of uncertainty. And I'm always questioning um, you know, how I can make this a viable uh, career, just financially, and how to make it sustainable. Um, uh, what is uh, my work's relevance, if any, to, uh, to the public, to society? And then also just personal questions of why, uh, why I do it and uh, why I do it the way I do it. Uh, and so in that sense, this is more of like a status update than, uh, than any kind of conclusive, uh, any kind of conclusion. Um, so uh, what I'm gonna do today is just show you some images. I'm gonna talk pretty fast. I'm gonna scroll through a lot of images and talk about some of the, uh, the formative experiences that have happened in my career, which have generally been, uh, I, I would say, um, um, sort of chance divergences from the uh, path that I thought I was taking and uh, have ended up being, um, uh, being fortuitous. So uh, I am gonna get started. Uh, well, of course, that's a good opening uh, screen. Now, one thing that I'm gonna start out with is, uh, is, this is not my image, this is Cal Callagher, who's the cartoonist for the Baltimore Sun and The Economist. I thought it'd be relevant to, uh, in talking to upper schoolers at Gilman. Uh, my uh, encounter was with Cal Callagher and I had a very loose connection to, uh, to the Baltimore Sun, uh, and this person had a very loose connection to, to Cal Callagher. But uh, I interned with him, and you know, we didn't know each other, and there's the usual sort of awkwardness of working with somebody you don't know. And uh, I was put on doing sort of grunt work and filing for him. Uh, but the way he works is he reads uh, headlines in the morning, he lets ideas gel over the course of the day, and he starts doing compositional sketches uh, midday, and then in the late afternoon, he starts inking in uh, his drawing for, to meet the deadline for the next day. And every day, late afternoon, uh, when I when I could have or should have gone home, I looked over his shoulder and just watched the entire inking process for an hour or two. Uh, and at a certain point, he took notice that uh, I was a little bit more involved than the average intern. And I was I was genuinely interested in what he was doing, and he ended up uh, taking me under his wing. And I ended up working for the remainder of the summer at the editorial department 
um, of the sun and uh, would come back for subsequent summers from college uh, to work in the editorial department. And I ended up getting a fair amount of my work uh, published in, um, in, on the op-ed page of the sun, uh, varying levels of quality. Uh, most of it wasn't that good, but this is one that I was kind of proud of, of Peter Angelos. So uh, I found that people who are, you know, even big names, if you show genuine interest in what they're doing, uh, people are very generous uh, with their time and expertise. So I would say take encounter seriously. Uh, now I am going to do sort of, um, uh, I paint things. Generally the premise of my work is that I make paintings that look like the thing I'm looking at. And uh, that began in when I was really young. I mean, I grew up in Moncton in the country and there was uh, a forest outside my bedroom window and I was always fascinated with nature. I loved it. but. At the same time, it would fill me with, uh, with a deep sense, I guess, of longing, uh, which was sort of an anxious feeling. Um, I it was so, you know, I knew that nature was vast and, uh, and ancient beyond my understanding. And a way of connecting with it was to sit down with a uh, pencil and paper and to sort of channel it. And that process uh, was a sort of meditation during which I felt, you know, I guess flow is the word for it. I could spend, you know, hours on end really carefully observing the thing. There's also, uh, I would say, a magical component to, to um, by the way, these are all recent works. I'm not showing my really bad early work. Um, but uh, I, there's sort of a magical, a magic to the process of taking simple materials like graphite or, or paint and, and transforming it into the thing in front of you. And I would sit down with these little pieces of nature, you know, it could be a dead bird on the porch or a, or a leaf and just really travel into it. And on occasion I have to write an artist statement which I, I really don't like and I usually have to come up with some kind of contrived explanation for why I do things. But I think really in the last couple of years I've come to realize that that, that is really the fundamental impulse for why um, I, I do art. It's sort of the, the magic of it, the meditation, and, and the, almost the scientific, careful observation of things. Uh, so that has stuck with me. Now, uh, these pictures are mostly taken from my recent like Instagram posts. So they're, you know, all the th stuff I'm going to show you is recent work. But uh, so after Gilman, I went to the, um, I went to the Art Institute of Chicago, and. I went there because I, was looked, I looked at the top rated painting programs in the country. And when I got to Chicago, I realized that uh, it really wasn't uh, exactly what I, the, the painting department had a lean towards uh, a more sort of conceptual, uh, contemporary, maybe avant-garde um, art culture. And I was more of a traditionalist, or at least I like to do representational realist painting. And so I, found uh, my kindred spirits more in the illustration department. And there was one class in particular that met at the Field Museum in Chicago, which is the Natural History Museum there. And uh, we would take this kind of rickety elevator up to uh, the top floor, and there was a, a vast labyrinth of hallways that would open up into big rooms. Uh, for instance, one of these rooms was stacked to the ceiling, uh, these high ceilings with flat files. And if you pulled out a flat file, there'd be the, the skin of a bird with the feathers still on it, and then a little box next to it with the disarticulated bones of that bird. And you could just take the specimens out and draw them. And so the, um, although I plan to do more uh, painting at Chicago, I, I found my place more in the illustration department. So here are some recent works that I've done, still life work. Um, you know, I paint flowers are marketable. I always have that angle in mind. Um, and that's, uh, you could say it's sort of an allegory for modern life or, uh, or a self-portrait of sorts, uh, my stack of my clothes. And that's, that actually looks better than usual. Uh, so after uh, Chicago, I came back uh, to Baltimore and I lived at home. And that was one of uh, the harder summers I've had to endure because sort of taken out of the institutional setting where, you know, the schedule is determined, goals are set for you. Um, uh, you know, just daily schedule, and also I had sort of lost the, the status of being a student, which is actually uh, pretty nice. Uh, I was sort of adrift, and 
it was recommended to me by my family to, to study at the Art Students League, where my great aunt had studied in the, um, in the 40s and 50s. And uh, it was in many ways sort of the opposite of the Art Institute in that anybody could sign up. Um, and uh, it was inexpensive, non-degree. And getting into classes was actually like getting tickets to a concert. I took um, a train up to, to New York arrived at the Art Students League in Midtown Manhattan at about you know, one in the morning, and there were 40 people lined up uh, on the street to sign up for, for classes in, when registration opened. And in talking to these people on the street overnight, they were uh, there to sign up for this guy, uh, Ron Schur's class, who was a portrait and figure painter. And so I got into his class, and for two years I studied primarily uh, figure and portrait work, and here are just some of the you know kind of figures and portraits that I still do, and I would say is sort of my main fascination these days, is painting people. Um, one thing that happened was I was taking a night class at the Art Students League, and one of the uh, other artists was the senior illustrator at an ad agency, and he he could see that I drew pretty well, and so he decided you know to try me out at his ad agency, and uh, so I ended up being his understudy learning some Adobe software on the job, uh, learning about advertising illustration uh, part-time for the next two years. So I never planned to do that, but uh, I sort of meandered into that field with a couple more of my figure paintings. Uh, by the way, I do these, I mean, 90% from life. Um, I, I have a strange insistence on, on working from life uh, as opposed to photographs, which I'm still trying to figure out. That's my uh, daughter uh, sleeping. And that's my, my wife with my uh, older daughter. Now, uh, so when I came back to Baltimore the second time, I wanted it to be sort of a different kind of homecoming where I had my act together a little more. And so uh, I took out some uh, CDs of uh, Tony Robbins from the, uh, from the library. And I decided to really, you know, be proactive about, you know, he talks about uh, Colonel Sanders taking his, you know, chicken recipe uh, toting it around town and, and getting rejected 99 out of 100 times. Um, and what I decided to do was have cards made for my advertising il illustration. And c I cold called all the ad agencies in Baltimore um, down the line. And I think one out of 50 got back to me. Uh, but it, that one agency provided me with illustration work that was the majority of my income for the next seven or eight years. So um, I really think that uh, just being proactive in that way which was against, I'd say, my artistic nature, really turned into something, um, an important part of my career. Here are some of my very unglamorous kind of storyboarding work, uh, which is very different from what I usually do. And then I paint, um, I paint places, I paint landscape now. Uh, one time I was driving through the country and uh, countryside, and one thing I've always had to contend with is sort of the amorphous uh, kind of schedule of being an artist. And uh, being holed up in the studio is not uh, great for mental health. Uh, you don't get much social uh, interaction, and there's a certain heaviness that comes from being a studio painter. But I was driving in the, in the countryside, and I saw some umbrellas poking up above a, a cornfield, and I uh, pulled over, and there were some people painting landscape. And uh, I decided to get more into landscape which um, I thought would just be good for my health and also I thought it would be easy. You know, after doing, uh, you know, figure painting, I thought, you know, well, how hard is it to paint some trees? You know, nobody knows gonna know, nobody's gonna know if the drawing's off. You know, trees are green, it's gonna be pretty easy. So I spent the next several years doing completely inept landscapes that were uh, horrible. And, um, but after maybe five years, I started to get decent at it. And now I paint a fair amount on location. And uh, it just so happens that there's been a big plein air uh, culture that's grown up in the US. And there's a big you know, collectorship. People buy these paintings. And I would say now the majority of my income comes from selling landscapes. Uh, I was artist in residence at Ladue Gardens. That's a lotus I painted there. I like parking lots. And, uh, these mounds of snow are the closest we get to mountainous forms around here. Uh, so in general, that's the kind of work I do. Um, now, uh, 
so again, I'm still trying to figure this out. Uh, my living right now is a combination of doing commissioned portraits, uh, you know, selling figurative work, doing plein air landscape events that have popped up all over the country. Uh, I do some freelance illustration, although a lot of that is dried up. And, um, and I, st I started teaching, which was again, kind of a uh, serendipitous thing that I fell into. Uh, but I found that the career really requires a lot of improvisation and you know, a lot of personal change and acceptance that the uh, environment is constantly changing under my feet and trying to keep up with that. Um, so I'm cobbling together a living and uh, we'll see how it goes in the upcoming years. But uh, I appreciate your time and listening to me and really impressed with the work, by the way. Uh, Carl took me through the school. Yeah, great work. Um, so thank you very much. It's so good to see you. I was wondering how many familiar faces I'd see here today. I, I recognize you immediately. Oh, your artwork is beautiful. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank and you. Of course, we think of you every time we go by that painting. Oh, yeah, that oh. painting. I have mixed feelings about that painting. Oh, that's <laughs> Thank well, that you. That was a cool introduction, too. Oh, that was really, yeah. that, that was really moving. I didn't yeah. know that. Well, oh, sorry. I have to. Oh, well, thank you. It was good, good seeing you. 